Good afternoon to everyone. I welcome all of you to the 67th lecture in the lecture series in nonlinear dynamics conducted by the Department of Nonlinear Dynamics, Bharati Dawson University, with the support from USA 2.0. Today we are going to hear a talk from a senior most professor in physics from Belgium. Professor Kane obtained his PhD in physics in the year 1968 and carried out postdoctoral diploma in mathematical physics in the year 1980. Professor Kane had occupied various academic positions in the National Fund for Scientific Research, Belgium. Currently, Professor Kane is working as an emeritus professor at the University of Brussels, Belgium. Professor Kane visited several institutions around the globe for scientific collaborations and to participate and deliver lectures. Since the list is very long, I don't want to read it. Professor Kane has published more than 300 papers in international peer-reviewed journals, conference proceedings, and national journals. With this short introduction, now I invite Professor Kane to deliver his lecture. Over to you, Professor. Yes, okay. Uh, <clears throat> I plan to, to start from the classical nonlinear oscillator, which was introduced in 1974 by Matthews and Lakshmanan. And then go to its uh, generalization to two dimensions and in generally to any number of dimensions, which was proposed in 2004, as well as its interpretation as a harmonic oscillator in a space of constant curvature. Then I plan to discuss its quantization the solution of the resulting Schrodinger equation in terms of orthogonal polynomials, and the alternative interpretations as a deformed Schrodinger equation or as a position-dependent mass Schrodinger equation. I then plan to review uh, two equivalent approaches which will be important for the extensions namely the deformed supersymmetric quantum mechanics or the use of a point canonical transformation starting from some Schrodinger equation with constant mass. Then I am going to uh, extensions. First, I plan to derive exactly solvable rational extensions of the, of the oscillator on the sphere with bound states expressed in terms of exceptional orthogonal polynomials. Then I plan to construct two families of quasi-exactly solvable extensions of the oscillator on the sphere or in hyperbolic space using the beta ansatz method. And finally, I plan to construct two families of curious extensions of the oscillator in a constant curvature space with known ground and first excited states using conditionally deformed shape invariance and a generating function method. So let us start. Uh, let us start, yes, okay, I am too far, yes. Let us start with the Matthews and Lakshmanan uh, classical nonlinear oscillator in one dimension, which is described by this Lagrangian L there uh, with a, a, a nonlinearity non parameter lambda. Uh, notice that for lambda equals zero, one gets the usual uh, Lagrangian of the, of the oscillator in one dimension. Uh, here I plan to use units wherein twice the mass is equal to one. Then the, the, the important point is that its uh, general solutions have just the same form as those for the for the for the for the oscillator. Uh, which is a, a, a non a periodic solutions for what with what exception is that the frequency omega is related to the amplitude by this relation. Uh, 
then this uh, dissociator, dissociator, yes, was generalized to D dimensions. Uh, this is still the, the classical, uh, classical oscillator, uh, so a classical Lagrangian. Here we have uh, VI, which has the, the components of the velocity, GIJ, which are the components of the angular momentum, R squared is the square of uh, X, the sum of XI squared, and uh, R here runs on the positive half line if lambda is positive or on a finite interval if lambda is negative. And there you have the, 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 the potential. Now, the corresponding Hamiltonian can be uh, easily constructed and it is given by this expression where you have the pi, which are the components of the of the of the momentum, and uh, this this expression here, uh, g i j have the usual expression for the for the for the angular momentum, and uh, an important point here is that uh, it was shown in in the same work that the non-linearity non parameter lambda may be interpreted as uh, the opposite of the curvature of the space, which means that this non-linear oscillator uh, in the Euclidean space may be interpreted as a harmonic oscillator on a space of constant curvature kappa. Yes. Now, let us go to the quantization. Can I interpret? Can I interrupt for a, a moment? Yes. I, I think in 1975, Lakshmanan and Isparan have uh, introduced the three-dimensional generalization. Okay. Yes. Okay. Fine. Uh, so let us go now the, to the quantization. Uh, the quantization can be can be done by replacing square root of one plus lambda r squared pi by minus r the square root of multiplied by the derivatives and uh, the components of the angular momentum by uh, the usual components uh, in uh, in quantum mechanics and it is in also interesting to replace the the intensity alpha squared by beta beta plus lambda. So beta is another is another constant. Now the Hamiltonian can the quantum Hamiltonian can be written in this form or in this it is also given by this expression where j squared is the, the square of the angular momentum operator. Uh, delta here is the Laplacian in a d-dimensional Euclidean space, and I take uh, h bar equal to one. Now, it turns out that the corresponding Schrodinger equation is separable in hyperspherical coordinates, so then one is left with a radial equation only. So the radial equation uh, can be written in this form. And uh, now the, here you have the, the radial uh, wave function R of R, and uh, E is the, is, the, is, is the energy. Now, this radial equation can be written in an alternative form, uh, which will be important for, for, for the sequel by introducing a function f of r, which is the square root of one plus lambda r squared. Now e is uh, related with uh, script e given there by this expression. E is, uh, <clears throat> is related to the angular momentum L. And v of r now uh, has two terms, a term which is the, the centrifugal term and uh, the, 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 oscillator, the oscillator potential. 
Now we have also a transformation give, giving uh, the, the radial equation, the radial wave function psi of r in terms of the former uh, radial equation, uh, radial function r. No, yes. Um, we have seven, yes. Now, the wave functions uh, can be found but directly uh, solving the Schrodinger equation, the radial Schrodinger equations, and they are given in terms of um, Jacobi polynomials. Uh, the energy eigenvalues, uh, the bond state energy eigenvalues are found in this way. And they are quadratic in nr, with n here is given by 2nr plus l, as in the, in the usual oscillator. The range of nr values is determined by from the normalizability of the radial wave functions. So it will be different according to the sign of lambda. The norm, uh, concerning the normalizability of the radial wave function, the starting radial Hamiltonian is formally self adjoint with respect to this measure. So the, this, the starting radial wave function R of R should be normalizable with respect to this measure. But we have made a transformation going from R to Psi and R and uh, according to this transformation, the transformed radial wave functions uh, should therefore be normalizable with respect to the measure dr. One finds also that the interval in, of integration depends on lambda. It is a finite interval for lambda negative and the positive half line for lambda positive. The, the result of this is that nr may take all positive integer values for lambda negative, which means on a, on a sphere, and uh, only a finite number of, uh, of values for lambda positive, which means on a hyperbolic uh, uh, space. Now, there are alternative interpretations of the radial Schrodinger equations. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the Schrodinger equation, the radial Schrodinger equation may be interpreted as a deformed Schrodinger equation with some deformed, uh, com uh, deformed uh, momentum, psi i, given by this expression. Here, I remember you that f of r is the square root of one plus lambda r squared. Or it may be interpreted also as a position dependent mass Schrodinger equation with a mass which is given by one over f squared. And here this corresponds to some uh, definite ordering of the, of, of the position dependent mass and the differential operator d of dr which is known as that of Mustafa and Mazahi Musavi. Now, uh, let us go to uh, another, in, another way of uh, dealing with the problem, which is deformed supersymmetric quantum mechanics. Uh, in deformed supersymmetric quantum mechanics, one considers a partner of, uh, of, the, of the starting Hamiltonian where the, the, the partner is written in terms of uh, A minus and A plus uh, and H0 and H1 
intertwine with a plus and a minus in this form. The corresponding potentials can then be written in terms of uh, of a superpotential in terms as, as, as in this way. Now, if the partner potential is V1 can be written in terms of, uh, of the starting potential and the super potential in this way, and is similar in shape and differs only in the parameters, one says that the problem is deformed shape invariant. In such a case, one may, co one may construct a hierarchy of Hamiltonians HI. Now, this hierarchy of Hamiltonians may be written in this form. So the starting Hamiltonian is H0, the partner is H1, and then we have all uh, H, H, H2, H3, and so on. The first order uh, operators A plus or minus fulfill then what is called a deformed shape invariant condition. It means that it can be uh, this A minus A plus corresponding to the parameters mu i may be written in terms of A plus and A minus for the parameters mu i plus one plus a constant epsilon i plus one. Or equivalently, we have this type of expressions, uh, this type of uh, set of equations for the superpotential. Uh, now, for in the present case of the of the oscillator in the, on a space of constant curvature, we have two parameters, which has the angular momentum L and beta, which defines the the intensity of the of the oscillator. So, uh, if we choose the ground state wave function psi naught as the seed function phi naught then uh, we obtain a superpotential which can be written in this form uh, minus a over r f of r plus beta r over f of r. The partner potential which is given by v naught plus 2f w prime is then given by this expression and uh, it is one finds actually that it is just the starting potential, but with different parameters, L plus one and beta minus lambda plus an additive constant. So the oscillator on a space of constant curvature uh, is deformed shape in veins. Uh, in addition, one finds that the, the additional constant that one has to, to consider epsilon i there is given by this expression. And from this, one may directly obtain the bound state wave functions by uh, considering the sum of the epsilon i. And this leads to the previous result. So this is another way of getting the, the bound state eg eigen eigenvalues. But there is an, another way of, uh, of uh, considering the problem is that um, mapping a deformed or, or position dependent mass Schrodinger equation of this type on a constant mass Schrodinger one. This uh, constant mass Schrodinger one will be uh, dependent on some potential u of u and a, a, a variable u. This uh, new variable can be written in this form with v of r is determined from the, the deforming function f there. Uh, and there are two, two, two additional uh, real constants, which may be uh, defined uh, different, uh, as, as one will. 
then uh, the the two uh, eigenfunctions which are there are related by this expression. The two potentials and their corresponding energy eigenvalues are also related by this expression here. And uh, there appear here uh, an additional constant uh, zeta. So we, we have three real constants, psi, eta, and zeta, which are which may be uh, chosen as, as one will. Now let us go to the to the oscillator in curve space. In, in, in that case, one has the, the deforming function is given by this expression. So it is very easy to, to, to perform the, the integral. And one finds that the, the function V of R is given by this expression according to the sign of lambda. So for the potential in the constant mass Schrodinger equation, one obtains either a trigonometric or hyperbolic partial Taylor potential uh, given by this expression, where uh, and depending on two parameters, A and B, which are, uh, which are given by uh, this expression in terms of the parameters determining the, the oscillator in a constant mass, uh, in a constant curvature space. So now these trigonometric and hyperbolic partial Taylor potentials have very well known um, bond state, uh, eigen, eigen state and eigen values. So one may start from this, uh, from these expressions for lambda negative or lambda positive, and to determine from this the the bound state eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of the of the oscillator in a, in a constant curvature space. It only remains to fix the three uh, the three uh, constant psi, eta, and zeta. This is easily done for lambda negative and for lambda positive, and one gets the previous result. Uh, now uh, I'm going to go to the yes. Excuse me, Professor. Shall I ask a question? Yes. So the yes, target of course. the target equation is a fixed one. Are you able to transform the given equation only to post uh, uh Sorry, I I, I didn't uh, understand. Will you repeat the question? Uh, just a minute. Uh, so you are transforming the equation, position dependent mass equation into constant mass Schrodinger equation. Yes. And your, tar your target equation is post teller right? Can you, yes. back, can you go back to two slides, please? Uh, two slides, please, back. Uh, yes, please back, yes, here. Oh no! One slide before or the previous yeah. one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, yes. So, yes. Okay. So you are transforming the given equation into post-Teller potential, right? Yes. So is it possible to transform to some other potential? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, no, I don't think so because you know this function v of r is determined by, by the function f of r. Okay. So you, you have only the choice of the, of the constant psi and eta. Oh. So uh, you, you, you are going to, 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 to get the, the, these such sort of, of expressions. Okay, thank you, Professor. Thank you. Okay. So now I go back. Uh, Yes, I go now to rational extensions. Now, uh, <clears throat> it is known that the trigonometric uh, Pascal-Teller potentials 
has uh, three uh, different types of rational extensions, type one, type one, two, and type three, that are exactly solvable and whose bond state wave functions can be written in terms of exceptional orthogonal polynomials. These exceptional orthogonal polynomials have been introduced in 2008, and there are orthogonal and complete polynomial sets, which in contrast with classical ones, Jacobi, Laguerre, and Hermit, admit some gaps in the sequence of their degrees. Uh, uh, some, a few, a few a few days ago we had a nice uh, uh, nice uh, a nice speak on this subject so uh, I hope that you you heard uh, the, that uh, that uh, seminar now the the extended trigonometric partial Taylor potentials can be written in this form here you have the usual uh, trigonometric potential plus rational terms. These rational terms can be written in this form. They are there appear here uh, a z, z which is a cos cosinus of two to u. A dot denotes a derivative with respect to to z, and for the three different times types, the the g m a b z is some Jacobi polynomial. Now, the bond state energies of the extended uh, trigonometric pressure teller potentials are given by this expression according to the type one or two or three, with corresponding uh, a, with functions which are given by sorry, which are given by these expressions, where you have phi not there, which is a, a simple uh, function which I'm going to, to show you. GM has been defined uh, over there. And then there appears the QM and R, which will differ for, uh, for type one, type two, and type three. So now I go to find not is simply this expression. And for type uh, one and two, QM and R is uh, M plus NR, degree polynomial in Z, and NR runs over 0, 1, 2, while for type 3, it is an M plus NR plus 1 degree polynomial with NR running on M minus M minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and QM minus M minus 1 being equal to 1. In all three cases, the polynomials Q, M, and R constitute families of orthogonal polynomials on the, the interval minus one plus one with respect to this measure where you have here the function G, the polynomial G, M, A, B, Z appearing. And these families uh, also form complete sets and therefore qualify as exceptional orthogonal polynomials. Uh, so, excuse me, Professor. Shall yes. I ask one more question? Um, yes. So, how do you get these rational extensions from the original potential? How do you get these potentials? Uh, one, one may get them from uh, from supersymmetric quantum mechanics by starting from. Uh, some well chosen um, well chosen seed function, for uh, instance. Uh, no, no, no. I am asking through point canonical transformation, but uh, from the radial part, how do you get these potential equations? You have we started. Which, you, which? Have, you have started. Uh, yes. A position dependent mass equation by, by yes. point, point can, canonical. Point transformation method, you are getting post equation. But now you are talking about rational extensions. Yes. So how do you get these equations by point canonical transformation method? Well, I am discussing the problem of uh, trigonometric partial Taylor potential. Now I am going back. I shall go back to, to the to the harmonic oscillator in a minute. 
you oh, know? Oh, okay, okay. Okay, <laughs> I am going to explain it. Okay. Oh. So, so this, uh, yes, okay. Now, uh, we know that there is a point canonical transformation that transforms the oscillator on the sphere into trigonometric pressure teller potentials with constant mass. But if we use the inverse of this point canonical transformation, one can transform the rational extensions of the partial teller potentials into rational extensions of the of the oscillator on the sphere. This is the, the way of proceeding. So one gets actually that uh, an, the extended oscillator uh, potential is the starting ha uh, harmonic oscillator plus some rational terms. And these rational terms are uh, expressed in terms of some uh, mth degree polynomial in Z, PM of L beta, and uh, Z now is the variable one minus two lambda R squared, and uh, a dot denotes a derivative with respect to Z. Yes, for the three types, you know, uh, I had a, a PML beta, uh, uh, which defines the, the rational terms. These are actually some specific uh, Jacobi polynomials, which are different for the three types of extensions. Now, one finds that the bond state energies of this extended oscillator uh, potential are given by these expressions. So th this is just obtained from the from the the point canonical transformation, the inverse of the point canonical transformation. Uh, so it is also an expression which is a quadratic in an R, as, as in the previous case. Now, the, the corresponding wave functions may also be found, and they are given in terms of psi naught is, uh, is the, essentially the, the ground state uh, wave function. PM is the is the, the the Jacobi polynomial I have just shown, and this then the QM and R are some rather complicated expression which can be uh, written in terms of uh, combination of uh, Jacobi polynomials, and they are different according to the type one considers. So the, this is the, the, the expression for type one. And then one has uh, other expression for type two and for type three. So uh, this is actually the, these uh, Q, M and R constitute orthogonal and complete families of polynomials. So they are exceptional orthogonal polynomials on minus one plus one with respect to this measure. Uh, one may also show that for lambdas going to zero, which is the nonlinearity non parameter going to zero, uh, the nonlinear oscillator or equivalently the oscillator on the sphere goes to the usual harmonic oscillator in D dimensions. Its bound state wave functions are then expressed in terms of Laguerre polynomials instead of Jacobi ones. And in the same limit, the rational extensions of the oscillator on the sphere go over to the known rational extensions of the harmonic oscillator, the usual harmonic oscillator, and the corresponding uh, exceptional orthogonal polynomials are also related in the same way. So this is for the rational, uh, the, the, the exactly solvable extensions. Now I, I would like to, to discuss some quasi exactly solvable extensions. Quasi exactly solvable Schrodinger equations are 
are characterized by the fact that only a finite number of eigenstates can be found explicitly by algebraic means, while the remaining ones remain unknown. The simplest quasi-exactly solvable problems are characterized by a hidden SL2R algebraic structure, as was shown by Turbiner and Ujveidze, and they are connected with polynomial solutions of the Hoyne equation, a generalization of the hyperbolic equi of the hypergeometric equation with four regular singular points instead of three. Now, there are also quasi-exactly solvable Schrodinger equations, which are related to generalization of this equation. And um, they are, of course, more complicated. In such cases, one may resort, for instance, to the functional beta ansatz method, which was, uh, for instance, uh, discussed by Zhang in 2012. Now, I am going to briefly discuss this functional beta ansatz equation. Um, now, uh, let us consider a second order differential equation of this type, where x is some polynomial of degree k, y is some polynomial of degree k minus 1, and z is uh, some polynomial of degree k minus 2. Notice that for, uh, for the hypergeometric equation, for instance, k is equal to 2. For the Horn equation, k is equal to 3. And for generalized Horn equation, k will be higher than k. Now, one looks in the beta ansatz method one looks for a solution that may be written in this uh, product form with zi real and distinct. Then this uh, differential equation can be transformed into this expression, where you notice that on the left-hand side, there is a constant. So we must have the same thing on the right-hand side. So this implies some conditions. This implies some conditions which are the following ones. The residues and the simple poles z equals zi must vanish. So this leads to what is called the beta ansatz equations determining the rules zi, and which can may be written in this form in terms of the two polynomials there appearing there. And there, there are other conditions, is that the coefficients of z, z2, and z k, k minus 2 must vanish. So this implies some relations between the coefficients of the starting differential equations and the roots. So I give a simple, ex uh, 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 yes, uh, simple examples now. Uh, Q, I am going to consider QES extensions of the, acer, of the oscillator in a space of constant curvature. Then in such a case, the potential is given by this expression, and it may be written like this, written like this, with A, give, uh, with A defined in terms of beta and lambda. Now I'm going to consider two families of extensions. The, the first one, is uh, depends on um, on the uh, positive powers of one plus lambda r two, and the second one depends on negative powers of the same. Now here a b one b two and b two m are two m plus one parameters, and the range of the variable r is the same as for the oscillator which means that it will be the positive half line for lambda positive and uh, a, 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 a finite interval if lambda is negative. So let us consider a simple example now. Uh, for instance, for the first potential of the first family. This first potential of the first family may be written in terms of three parameters, A, B1, and B2. 
and uh, one finds actually uh, some solutions for the values of B1 and B2 given in terms of two constants A and B1. Now, if A is equal to this expression, then one knows the ground state wave function of the corresponding Hamiltonian, and it is it may be written in this form with such an energy. Now, this is a simple a simple result, but I I don't cannot give you all the all the derivation. Now, after that, uh, I give. Another example, if A takes this value, then uh, one knows another eigenstate, uh, which can be written. Then, yes. Do you want to take a question now? There is a question now. Uh, Chitika, I'm sorry. You can raise your question now. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Shall I ask? Uh, Ma'am. Uh, Good afternoon, ma'am. Ma'am, actually, I'm having a doubt. Uh, why you are considering uh, the potential, the parameter to be beta into beta plus lambda, ma'am? Because the potential is omega naught. When it's omega naught or square divided by one plus lambda square itself, it's exactly soluble. And why you are considering that factor, factorized form, ma'am? Uh, well. Uh well, the, part of the potential is, is still the same, but of course, uh, the <clears throat> the total potential uh, will be only uh, quasi exactly solvable because of the additional terms. Ma'am, ma and that my question is that constraint that uh, that constraint term that uh, considering the parameter to be in the beta into beta plus lambda, if it is omega naught instead of still it's that constraint would be from would be satisfied, ma'am. My question is why that uh, why we are taking that parameter to be beta into beta plus lambda in in the potential form. Ah yes, well of course. Well, it's perhaps easier to to write the the the, the exact solution in terms of uh, Jacobi polynomials. Okay, ma'am. Uh, okay, ma okay. uh, well, but it's just uh, the same, you know. Uh, <clears throat> if if the, the the parameters of the of the of the of the Jacobi polynomials are, are easier to write if you if you write the omega equal beta beta plus lambda. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so now I consider uh, another example here. Where if if a takes this value, then one one knows another eigenstate which is written in this form, with uh, this eigenvalue, and z one here is a root of the beta and z equation, which is in in the present case a quadratic equation, so it's not difficult to to get it. Uh, such an eigenstate may be a ground or a first excited state according to the value taken by Z1. So in this way, some explicit results have been obtained for the first three potentials of the two families. Now I go to another, another way of getting quasi-exactly solvable uh, potentials. It is the conditionally deformed shape invariant method. I am going to consider again two families of extensions of the oscillator in curved space, the, the same as before, you know, uh, the first family and the second family, and A, B1, B2, and B2M are 2M plus 1 parameters, and the range of R is again the same as for the oscillator. Uh, when I am going now to use a conditionally deformed shape in various methods in order to build polynomials with two known eigenstates, the, the ground state and the first excited states. And this is a method that generalizes to a deformed context 
the conditional shape invariance method, which was proposed by Chakrabarty in 2008. So, uh, I consider the first potential of the first family to start with. So this is again uh, the this is the 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 the, the harmonic uh, oscillate potential plus these terms. And uh, I assume that lambda positive and B two positive. And I introduce now a super potential of this form depending on three parameters xi, eta, and zeta. Notice that for the for the for the usual uh, oscillator uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the sphere, I had only the first two terms, so I had another term now. Now in deformed, uh, in deformed supersymmetric quantum mechanics, there is scaled potential there, V11, minus E0, is represented by uh, W2 minus F DW over DR. This is a supersymmetric quantum mechanics, simply, yes, you know. And this is a Riccati equation. If I introduce V11 and WR in that Riccati equation, I get a, syst a system of equations, a system of five equations. Now, the last three equations, uh, when I solve them, give me the values of the unknowns appearing in the superpotential, psi, eta, and zeta, in terms of the potential, in, in terms of the parameters of the potentials. Now, there remains the first and the second equation. A combination of them will give me the energy of the ground state E0, and there will remain an equation. So I get a E0 given by this expression, and the first equation, the first equation deriving from the Riccati equation, provides a constraint uh, relating the parameters of the potential, A, B1, B2, and L. So uh, it is also possible to write the ground state wave function. Well, this is just uh, the, the application of uh, deformed shape invariant, uh, de deformed to supersymmetric quantum mechanics. It is given by this expression and one finds uh, the, the expression uh, written over there in terms of the three parameters, psi, eta, and zeta, which have been determined. Now, one may now consider the partner of the, of, the, of the potential we have just considered. It is W2, uh, W2, W squared plus F DW of R. And uh, it can be written in this form with some parameters, uh, with some parameters uh, L prime dash, L prime, A prime, B prime one, B prime two, and a constant R. So it is uh, possible to, to calculate them for, from this expression. And one finds that they are given by those expressions. So the starting potential, we have shown that the starting potential is deformed shape invariance, but this deformed shape invariance is not unconditionally very valid because we have found a constraint relating the potential. The potential is therefore conditionally deformed shape invariant. Now, one may try to repeat the procedure by taking the partner starting potential and assuming a new potential of the same form. And by proceeding as before in the first step, one finds these values for the new parameters and uh, the, 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 the new, uh, the new e, e0, e0, and a new constraint. So we, you notice that we have, we have obtained two constraints uh, relating the parameters of the potential. So this constraint might, must be compatible, provided we choose 
appropriate values of the parameters. And it turns out that you have to choose B1 equal to this expression and A and eta given by those expressions. The result is that the potential can be written in this form and it has a ground state and a first excited state whose energies are given by those expressions. We have also obtained um, the ground and first excited state wave functions, and they may be written in this way. And one may check that they are normalizable and that psi one has a single zero on the positive half line, as it should be for a first excited state. What I have shown here in detail for the first potential of the first family can in principle be done for the other potentials. But the problem is that the number of constraints increases with M. From the results obtained for the first few potential of the families, one may guess the general results by using another method, providing a general approach for building potentials with two known eigenstates in deformed uh, supersymmetric quantum mechanics and which is due to Kashuk. But I have no time to explain how, how it works. I am going only to show you the results. The results is that the potentials of the first family of extended potentials can be written in this form with A, B1, B2, B, B, B2M, given by those expressions. And the first two eigenstates have the energies given by those expressions with the first two wave functions given by these expressions respectively. And one may also check that Psi one is, uh, has a single zero on the, on the positive half line as it should be, and these functions are normalizable. No, we, <clears throat> there are also uh, results for the second family of extended potential, this one, with uh, such uh, results for the, for the parameters. We also have the first two eigenstates, and the first two, two, a, two wave functions, which have uh, these expressions. So uh, this is uh, ex, ex, essentially what uh, I wanted to show, but uh, I have a final remark is that the ex, exactly solvable or quasi exactly solvable extensions uh, can also be constructed in the case where the oscillator potential in the space of constant curvature, which is given by this expression, is replaced by a Kepler Coulomb potential in the space of constant curvature, which is given by this expression. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you for your interesting talk. So now the forum, forum is open for questions, discussion, clarifications. Yeah, you can go ahead. Siti Arati, you can rise. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ma'am, uh, as you yes. said, uh, is this... Uh, could you physically interpret how these two potential has been actually is related, ma? So from your results, yes. both them. Shall sorry. I repeat my question, ma? Uh, I do not understand your question. Sorry, ma'am. Actually, the, these two put. So you observe that the, the result has been replaced. The one of the potential by, our, by the Coulomb potential. So how yes. the, the how they physically related, ma'am? How one is rational? Well, uh, well, the no, no, they, 
there is no no royal uh, no royal uh, relation, you know. But uh, in fact, uh, the Kepler Coulomb potential in the space of constant curvature was already considered by Schrödinger. So it it is well known. But uh, one may one may uh, c consider, for, for instance, uh, the, some extension. This this is new. <laughs> Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so, questions? Is there any clarification, sir? Questions from others? Yeah, um, there are no more questions, uh, Professor. So, <laughs> Uh, so I would like to conclude the session. Um, uh, so I, I would like to conclude the session by thanking Professor Kane for accepting our invitation and giving a very interesting talk on quantum solvable systems. As he has uh, recalled all the results he has done for the past uh, few years. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much Thank for you. giving a very Thank wonderful you. talk. Thank you.